Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I've got an all new purchase or pass. So we're gonna be chatting over some new makeup releases. I'll let you know my thoughts, what I'm interested in, what I'm not interested in. So let's go ahead and hop into it. If you're new here, I upload Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern. I would love for you to subscribe. But let's start off with the product I've had the most tags on by far. Okay, the new five pans from ColourPop. So this is really funny. If you guys watched my makeup predictions for 2020, I mentioned that I had a feeling ColourPop was going to go a new direction with their packaging just because they've really exhausted that nine pan series. And I didn't think they could just keep doing that in 2021. And I figured they would go another direction, whether it was mini or large. And the night that I was editing that video, I started getting all these tags on Instagram and I go to look and I see, oh, they actually did that. They came out with these five pan minis. Packaging quite similar to the Natasha Denona mini five pans. I know that's been a topic of discussion with these. And I've heard some conversation about did ColourPop copy them? And ColourPop is very inspired by other brands with a lot of their releases and that's pretty clear. However, we have also seen this format with e.l.f. and their bite size palettes. I mean, those are four pans and these are five, but still similar concept with that clear top window. What surprised me a bit about these is that they retail for $10. And I don't think that's an unreasonable price. I think that it's a fine price. However, when you look at the nine pan series from ColourPop, those initially started at $12. We've seen some of them at 14 and 16, but to jump up four shades and only increase the price $2, I kind of anticipated that these would sit somewhere closer to the $8 range. I have to say too, personally, I really don't like the packaging of these, which is funny because I love the packaging of the Natasha Denona ones. I don't mind the packaging of e.l.f., but something about these looks so cheap to me. And I think it's just those doodles on the front. Also, color story-wise, I don't think any of these five are anything extraordinary. So I'm gonna be skipping these for now, but I am curious to see if they continue with this series in the year. I'm anticipating we'll see a few more color stories from them. With ColourPop in mind though, if you guys watched yesterday's video, I was talking about older palettes that I was debating picking up and I did end up going ahead and placing an order for the Making Mauves palette. So I'm really excited about that one, especially after reading your comments on that video. It seems like a lot of you guys love that palette as well. So I'm excited to get it, do some looks with it. Maybe I'll do some looks with it over on my Instagram if you guys wanna see, at, see that over there. We're also seeing some Lunar New Year themed releases right now, like this collection from ColourPop. They're coming out with some curated nine pans with their single shadows. Now, I like this. I love that ColourPop has single shadows and I wish that their single shadows were even more popular because I love the concept of single shadows. I think they can add a lot of value to a collection. And ColourPop used to have a pretty wide single shadow range and these days it seems like not many of them stay. I kind of thought they were phasing single shadows out. Just based on the last few times I was on the website, it seemed like most of their single shadows were out of stock and they had such a limited range available to begin with. I will say what I love with single shadows is buying that one special shade that I don't already have in a palette. And this collection, a lot of these shades, I feel like I do have in palettes and many of us do as well. So I don't see the pull in that sense, but as always, they nailed the packaging. This looks stunning. Okay, next, this one I saw on my friend Jen Phelps' Instagram page. If you guys aren't already following her, she shares a lot of upcoming launches. She also has amazing swatches, amazing comparisons. So I'm just gonna give her a little shout out here because I would not have known about this if I didn't see it on her page, but Beauty Bakery is coming out with a mini line. So this is the Bite Size Collection and it's coming to Target and I'm so incredibly excited about it. Beauty Bakery has been on my list to try for a while now, but I just haven't had the right product to pull me in. But you guys know how much I love minis and I'm excited to see that that trend of smaller makeup is becoming more popular. Also love that this is available at Target, so I probably will pick something up. The blushes are definitely calling to me as always because I just adore blush, but I also have my eye on the highlights. Okay, the most boring release we're gonna talk about this week is from Tarte. This is the Juicy Amazonian Clay Tartlet Palette. So this is the newest in their Tartlet series. However, they have strayed away from that original Tartlet packaging a bit, and this does have more shades in it. And I don't think neutrals are boring. I love neutral shadows. I wear them so often, 
But the reason I'm really underwhelmed with this is just because this, it's like Tarte just recycles the same color stories, the same shades over and over again. This is basically a full size of the mini that they did in their three mini palette holiday series. So I just feel like there's not a lot of innovation here to get me excited. I do recognize that these are a lot of the tones that many people wear on a daily basis. So I could see it being a good staple palette. And I feel like that's kind of Tarte's audience. Tarte isn't trying to be ColourPop with all these different unique products to add to your collection. Tarte is kind of more so aimed at someone who wears a simple look, a natural look, and this palette fits that, but it just doesn't feel as innovative as it could. I feel like they can fit into that brand and that theme while still coming up with unique concepts. All right, these nine pans right here. Before I tell you the brand, what brand would you guess? Because I thought, oh, this is the new launch from the Norvina line within Anastasia Beverly Hills. Because don't these look so much like the nine pans from Norvina? But these are actually Lime Crime. And I think these are pretty cute. The top palette with the pinks and yellows definitely gives me like pink lemonade summer vibes. I also love the blues and purples in the other palette. I don't know that it calls to be enough that I want it in my collection, but I do think it's a really pretty concept from Lime Crime and I'm always excited about more nine pans on the market. Okay, lots of new from Milani. They're doing this fruit themed collection. Milani is my favorite drugstore brand. I think they're so consistent and very high quality. So they've got some tinted lip balms, moisturizing lip tints, cream blushes. This has been a trend for a little while now and I'm really confident we're gonna keep seeing this in 2021. Cream products especially, we've been seeing a ton of cream and liquid blushes launching. Also those like sheer lip tints or tinted lip balms, those have been a really hot product for a little while now as well. They're not for me, but I do see why so many people love them and I think it's cool to have a more affordable option from Milani. I also think this packaging is very adorable. We've also got some new from Becca. So this launch kind of surprised me. This wasn't really what I was anticipating seeing from Becca this year. They're coming out with the Light Shifter Dewy Tint. This is a tinted moisturizer which makes sense that's been a big trend these days a lot a lot of brands are doing tinted moisturizers but this the more I think about it I think this does make sense because I believe that they're in the process of discontinuing their love foundation or like that skin I don't not a skin tint because it had a pretty high coverage to it but that product and I feel like this is maybe meant to be the replacement of that one I liked that, I didn't love it. It's sheer coverage, my favorite. And what really shocked me, it's only $30. I say only, that's still a good amount of money for a product. However, from Becca, I would have expected it to easily be $40, $42. I mean, their highlighters are 38, so to have this sheer coverage product for 30, I was pretty impressed with. They also have what they're calling, let me get this right, the Light Shifter Mineral Veil, which really gives me hourglass ambient lighting powder vibes. So maybe if you love that product and you're not purchasing from Hourglass right now, I wonder if this could be an alternative. This is also only $34. Again, I'm saying only, even though that's a lot of money, but that's much less than the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders are, but this seems like a similar concept where it's that glowy finishing powder, translucent, but really blurs and buffs everything together. I really love those kind of finishing powders. I will say though, if you're sitting here thinking, you know, I don't want to spend $34 on that, the Milani Prep Set and Glow Powder is a great drugstore alternative to that type of product. I have not tried this one from Becca, so I can't confirm if this is a dupe, but this is a great finishing powder that's very blurring, but not too heavy. So this could be an alternative if you had your eye on that one. I'm a little late to talk about this next one, but MAC is collaborating with The Sims. I don't usually highlight MAC releases in my videos because MAC is not cruelty free, but I just thought this collection was so hilarious because I've never played The Sims, but I have a good idea of what color story you see there, kind of what it looks like. And this palette absolutely was not inspired by that game. Like they, they just had these shades laying around and they decided to partner with The Sims. Do you guys remember like three years ago when Tarte did that April Fool's joke and they said, oh, we're coming out with the blue eyeshadow palette, oh, April Fool's. This, 
I would almost think that Mac was playing an April Fool's joke on us. Like, oh, just kidding, this is not The Sims palette. This is The Sims palette. However, I'm also gonna throw up a photo from Doodles by Bunny, or Doodles by The Bunny. She recreated her vision for what this palette could have been, and this is what I think Mac should have gone with. You know, I get that it's a bit more colorful. I don't know that it would appeal to as many people as that other very muted palette would, but this fits the theme. A brand that I've really had my eye on for a while now, and I've been curious what they would do in 2021, Anastasia Beverly Hills. So they used to be my top favorite drug, drugstore, they're not drugstore, my top favorite high-end brand, but I feel like they fell off for a little bit there. I think they're kind of having an identity crisis these days, and they released a million palettes in 2019, and I know that they got a lot of feedback that consumers didn't like them releasing that many, so they slowed down a lot in 2020, and it seemed like they took a break from launching so frequently, so... Because of that, I was curious what they were doing in 2021. And I'm thinking it's got to be something big. Like they've been working so hard on this. And that amount of time span in between launches is like old Anastasia. And they used to come out with such innovative launches. So I was thinking, you know, something big, something amazing is coming from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And this is their newest launch. This whole collection is themed by like ice and gloss. The packaging, let me start there. This feels like luxury packaging. This is the most beautiful exterior packaging I've ever seen from Anastasia Beverly Hills, so I love that. And while this launch wasn't what I was anticipating, my initial thought was kind of like, oh, it's kind of boring. But the more I consider the way that makeup trends have shifted in the last year, I do think this is very on trend right now. So there's more of this movement towards more natural, like no makeup makeup minimal looks and i think that this collection fits into that vibe so first of all we've got the brow freeze which they describe as a product meant to give you the feathered hair look hello soap brows have been everything for the last six months or longer so i love that anastasia did that i will say you probably don't need to go out and spend 23 dollars on this because it's very likely to give you the same effect as the bar soap in your bathroom would, but I do think it's cool that they're kind of capitalizing on that trend. We've also got these clear lip glosses, again, very on trend, but again, personally, for a clear lip gloss, I'm not gonna spend a high-end price for that when I can go buy a $3 one from Essence and I know it's gonna be amazing, but I think the timing of this launch makes a lot of sense. The only product I'm a little on the fence about is the highlighter, and I'm gonna have to wait until more reviews come out about this because it looks so white and icy, but they describe it as a universal shade. And I was looking at the swatches on their website. It really did not look that universal on the two different skin tones that they shared it swatched on. I feel like it's supposed to have more of a sheer base to it. I don't know, I'm very curious about this highlight. It seems like a pretty unique formula. And it's supposed to give like a wet reflective shine which I'm not really into these days. I prefer a more toned down highlight. I mean, I went a little bolder today, but this isn't always my preference these days, but I know so many people love that look. So at first I was underwhelmed by this launch, but I do think it makes a lot of sense in terms of makeup trends at the moment. Okay, the one I'm the most excited about is from my favorite skincare brand, The Ordinary. They are coming out with concealers. I have been so curious about, about when they're going to release more makeup products because they initially launched their two foundation formulas. I think it was almost four years ago at this point. I remember testing the high coverage serum fountain. No, the, cause they had two. They had a serum one and a high coverage one. I'm saying had as in past tense, they still do. But the high coverage one, I tested that in a video and I did not like it. I remember it made me break out. However, my makeup preferences have changed so much, I almost feel like I might like it these days. Also, my skin used to be a lot more sensitive. These days, it's not as sensitive, probably because I've gotten better with my skincare routine. I use hardly any fragrance, so I'm sure that plays a factor, which makes me think maybe I should give that foundation another try, either that one or the serum one. These days, you know I love a sheer serum-y foundation, so I'm gonna be picking up this concealer when it launches because I love The Ordinary and I'm so eager to test this out. And I might pick up a foundation with it. I probably shouldn't because I'm trying to work through some foundations. I probably shouldn't, but I'm tempted. This retails for $5.80. I just, I love The Ordinary and I have a feeling this is gonna be a really good one. 
It's buildable, high coverage, skin-like finish, natural matte. That's the description I want out of a concealer. So I'm so eager to pick this one up. It's launching January 19th. Let me know your thoughts on everything that we talked about today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.